Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 6, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Xavier went hunting again on Virus Total and came across an interesting script that apparently was used in order to further compromise a system. So this is not the actual exploit per se, but a script that would be installed by the initial exploit or as Xavier points out, a malicious user who already has access to the system. In part, what's sort of interesting about this script is that it's very modular. So it loads, for example, individual components from GitHub and then has also a built-in update mechanism that can be used to update the script itself. It uses only command line utilities. So with that, it prevent, presents sort of a simple text-based user interface that you can use to select and execute individual components. One disadvantage, of course, of the virus total hunting approach is that we don't really have a lot of sort of context around the script. So not really sure who used it, how it is possibly being used in the wild, if it's being used in the wild. And then, of course, what the initial exploit was that was used to install the script on an affected host. And researchers at SNCC Security, a company that specializes in enumerating and securing dependencies in open source projects, did find interesting vulnerability in many projects that deal with zip files. And now they sort of focus here on zip files, but the vulnerability certainly applies to other archive file formats. The problem is that zip and other archives may include file names. And if you unzip the file, you may blindly use the file names that are located inside the file. These file names may also include directory names and that in turn can then lead to directory traversal or the overriding of existing files, which then of course could be executed. As a worst case scenario, think about a zip file that's being unzipped on a system using a privileged user, let's say root. And this zip file does include a file called ls with the right directory prefix. So a dot dot slash whatever it needs to then overwrite the actual ls binary. Next time a user or root again does execute ls, code that hacker snuck into this binary is being executed. Now, this is certainly a worst case, but you can imagine if I just blindly use file names inside a zip file, then I'm essentially vulnerable to all of these different issues that we talked about when we we're talking about accepting sort of arbitrary file names in file uploads. And with that, yes, uh, remote code execution is certainly within the realm of possibilities. Now, if you're using the normal zip or unzip binary in order to extract files, you usually get a warning if you're about to overwrite a file. But if you have other software that does unzip files unattended, it often doesn't prompt and doesn't stop the unpacking of these files, even if they overwrite other existing files. And that's really sort of what they're pointing out here, that there are many projects out there that do decompress these archives insecurely. So if you and any of your projects are actually decompressing or unpacking archives like this, make sure you validate file names before you blindly trust them and then overwrite existing files. And then we got a couple updates on older stories. First of all, Redis servers. I think it was two weeks ago or so that we wrote about some of the attacks against these Redis servers. There's now an update from Imperva. Imperva did a survey of Redis servers and found that 75% of exposed servers are actually running malware. Now, not sure what happened to the other 25%. You really should not expose Redis servers to the open internet. 
And then looking at another uh, known and a little bit older by now vulnerability, Drupal Getten 2. Turns out there are still about 100,000 Drupal websites out there that are vulnerable to this second version of this remote code execution vulnerabilities. Now, we have seen multiple exploits hitting this particular vulnerability. If you find an server on your network that hasn't been patched yet, please assume that it already has been compromised. Now, according to the same blog post, uh, there are about 500,000 Drupal 7 servers total out there. So actually only 100,000 still vulnerable. That's about 80% of servers patched. That's actually not a bad number, sort of looking at past patching statistics for similar mm -hmm. software. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.